Hello. I watched a video on Ephraim's re called Ephraim's Rescue this week on YouTube and saw a familiar name on the end, John Toon, among those who had been rescued. I recognized him as one of our ancestors, and I thought you might be interested in a short life sketch of his life. So here goes with a life sketch of John Toon. John Toon was born in 1813 and died in 1893, a little over 80 years old. He was a musician, a doctor, a lawyer, a school teacher, a pioneer, a missionary, and of course, father and grandfather. Quite an interesting man. He is my third great grandfather, so you can figure out where that puts him for you. And I did most of my looking through family search and the information there. So it shows that he was born in Birmingham, England, and died in Croydon, Utah, but lots of travel in between those two places. Birmingham, England is an industrialized, very busy part of England, but he was born to wealthy parents and had all the best things of life. He was educated and was the oldest of 14 children. He had six brothers and seven sisters. Five of these children died at birth or a few months old, and several others died uh, before they reached maturity. And that was the challenge of that era was that, that uh, death was very harsh on, on young people. I mentioned that he died in Croydon, Utah. Croydon, if you can see the little teeny place here called Echo, um, which is Echo Canyon, Echo Canyon's welcoming center is there, and Croydon is up here, not very far off of Highway 84. So uh, he was called there, uh, as I'll mention later, later in life. Let's look at a little bit of his life. John and Emma traveled to Utah. Uh, John met Emma, and they heard of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ in England and were baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in 1849. In the early winter of 1851, they sailed for America, arriving in March of 1851. They left Potawatomi, Iowa, in seven, on 7 June of 1852 in Captain Thomas C. Howell's company. There were 10 families, 79 people total, 12 wagons, 77 oxen, and horses and uh, sheep and calves. And they arrived in Salt Lake in September of 1952. John's journal recorded that he played his cello in the evenings during the trek west, and he also used his musical talents to appease a group of Indians that confronted this company. John also played his cello in the first orchestra of Salt Lake. Notice that he had married Emma Prozier in June of 1836, and there were eight children born to them. Charles Jabez Toon is our ancestor. He's the fourth, and he was about um, well. He was a young man when they traveled over because Anne died in '50, so he was six years old. Anne died on the way to America and was buried at sea. I mentioned that he was a musician. He played his violin in the Royal Orchestra of Queen Victoria and was invited to come back anytime he wanted to be in that orchestra. And he also played in the old Salt Lake Theater and Social Hall and the orchestra there. And his 
um, cello is still on display. Well, he hadn't been in Utah very long when he was called to serve a mission to England again in 1854. And he actually made five trips across the plains bringing immigrants to Utah after this mission. One of the times that he returned from England, he traveled with Martin Handcart Company and was among those that were rescued, as I mentioned at the very beginning. You can see this 2013 movie called Ephraim's Rescue on YouTube and watch for John Toon's name among the rescued. There's the link to it, uh, but this is a video, so you won't be able to grab that link. But if you search for Ephraim's Rescue, you can find it. It was a very well-made movie and followed on the 17 Miracles movie uh, path. So there's some of the same people in it. While on his mission, he met an English school teacher named Hannah Wardle and helped her cross the plains with the Martin Company. He married Hannah as his second plural wife in 1857 in Salt Lake. And he had also met Jemima Cook, who joined the church against her family's wishes. And she was also part of the Martin Company. Near Devil's Gate, Wyoming, John Mary carried Jemima across a stream of frigid icy water. He also helped push her handcart on the thousand mile journey from Winter's Quarter to Salt Lake Valley as a returning missionary. And he married her just a few weeks after he married uh, Hannah. So that was in 52. In 57, with, when Johnston's army was coming to Utah, John and his three wives and children decided to move to Pace, Utah. Hannah and Emma were both expecting babies, and they lived in a covered wagon during the cold winter months. Hannah and her twins died from childbirth complications and from being exposed that whole winter. And Emma's baby, named Benjamin, died two months after being born, probably also from just lack of nourishment and the cold winter. So that was in 1857. In 1876, almost 20 years later, John was called to help settle Croydon in Morgan County, Utah which we looked at that map at the very beginning, with his third wife, Jemima, in 1876, they moved there. His first wife, Emma, stayed in Salt Lake for the rest of her life, about another 19 years, possibly because of the persecution that was being heaped on uh, anyone who was practicing polygamy. Interestingly, as I mentioned at the very beginning, he was trained as a carpenter, doctor, and a lawyer. Because he came from a well-to-do family in England, he received a very good education. And so he received training as a musician, as a carpenter, as a lawyer, and a doctor. And he served as those, plus as a school teacher and schoolmaster in Croydon, Utah for many years. One of the things that he did in Croydon, when smallpox went through the area, is he actually developed a vaccine and vaccinated the 60 people in town and cleared smallpox out of there. A very interesting man. He was, uh, he affected a lot of lives and blessed many people as he blessed our ancestors through my mother, perhaps your grandmother, and also my grandmother and George Henry Toon, my great-grandfather, and Charles Jabez Toon, his son, John Toon's son, and our great-great, my great-great-grandfather. Anyway, I maybe you'll want to look at Family Search and look at more of his life story, but that's enough for this short video. And I'll stop the screen share to say, Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll enjoy searching more of those kinds of videos on your own, or searching more of those kinds of lives on your own.